The answers are yes, yes and not really. The questions I will tell you later on, but they are related to the price. Because here where I am, the international version costs 450 euros. But if you can find it imported maybe for way less, it would have actually a big impact on my rating. But as for what it is right now, I would say let's switch and talk about the design and build quality first. I definitely like the minimalistic approach with the gold trim here and it looks quite elegant. I definitely can't complain, really nice and the build quality just as well because nothing creaks, everything feels solid. We maybe don't have an auto Audible click, but a nice tactile one. And I'm not the biggest fan of the position of the volume rocker. I would like to have that one on the right, but the rest is fine because the power button here actually is placed very nice. We also maybe don't have a curved front, but a nice transition to the slightly curved sides. And the back is also flat again. And that one is a little bit on the slippery side, but you can still quite easily hold on to this phone. One hand usability though will be a little bit harder. But other than that, I definitely like the in-hand feel. It feels very nice after all. Then we have the dual cam here along with the flash um, microphone and the volume rocker as I already said USB type C headphone jack and the speaker here on the left on the right side this time which is a little bit something unusual the SD card and SIM card tray we have breathing light but instead of all the other Nubia devices where this rot red circle lights up it's the two capacitive buttons lighting up because this is the fingerprint reader now and I have to say this one works really good because as you can see very good it turns on quite fast absolutely no complaints very reliable all the times so definitely nice maybe the bezels aren't the smallest ones but for what it is I would say it's still a fine now about that display though I have a little bit of some minor complaint because we only have color temperature control no saturation control and I'm sorry for the flickering this is such something I can't avoid on camera and it's worse than on any other phone for some reason I don't know but this is what I think the white is nice with about 520 lux it's not the brightest one for an AMOLED display but sunlight readability was okay Black is great since it's an AMOLED display with 1080p, also mostly sharp enough, absolutely no problem. But it is the calibration, because if you maybe side by side compare it with with something more normal, you will see that colors in general are just way darker, as you can see the skin tone, the yellow and also the blue. So this is a general thing of this display, it is just too dark. But you will get used to that after a while, but it's just not natural, just not accurate. So still, otherwise it would be very good. Now what about the speaker? There was some odd crackling, usually didn't happen, so I'm not quite sure maybe something happened during the last few days, but it was usually fine, and I will give it a good, because it is loud enough, could be louder, doesn't have to be, I've said all Salem already on the Z17 Mini, but it sounds a little bit warmer, rich, and actually is quite a good speaker. Forget the cracking, that was never there. I don't know what was here or going on. Headphone jack is really good. And let me quickly show you something, which is also something I think I have not seen on Nubia devices yet, because for the sound, we can see now Dolby Audio. Usually we have DTS and Dolby Audio though. I don't have a headphone jack right here right now, headphone plug, but actually sounds better than DTS because you have more customization options and it is good. So this one is actually really good. Now performance wise, how do we access the quick the quick ones, as you can see here, now this time again, it's the back button. On the Z11, Z17 Mini, it was the home button. So they kind of switched this around the way they want to, from device to device, because on the Z17, it's once again different. But this is running a Snapdragon 625. So I guess you will hear me saying the same as I always do. I like the performance. It is not the most snappiest phone ever. It is not the responsive, most responsive one. But what it is, is just very, very lag free, very consistent and very smooth as you can see here in the browser. And it, this is actually one of the better, if not almost best optimized Snapdragon 625 phones. And it can easily hold up with something like the Lenovo P2, Moto Z Play or Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, if not sometimes even deliver something a little bit better because I really like it. Of course, as we have seen, multitasking is a little bit delayed because we have to just long press. What you can do is though use three finger gestures, which works faster, but it doesn't work with one hand. But I definitely like the multitasking, even though not with this mechanism, but I definitely like the overall performance. Everything is smooth. Everything is very, very lag free. And it's just a great experience overall. Same goes also for games. You can play them on a moderate level, and I said the same already, because the Snapdragon 625 doesn't heat up. You can play for a very long time. All games still are absolutely nicely played because you don't have any frame drops or something like that and you get enough frame rates so even more demanding games can be played. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is for heavy gaming really planned because it just deliver, doesn't deliver the highest frame rates but still more than satisfying. 
More than satisfying even so though is the battery life because a full charge takes almost two hours which is still fine because we have a little bit of a bigger battery of 3630 milliamp hours what I found. For some reason all the apps that I found show me 3000 but this has to be an issue. 8% for an hour of YouTube is also very good and the battery life maybe not all that impressive on mobile data with about maybe six hours maybe even possible six and a half hours it's the nine to even ten hours at least with my use on Wi-Fi that make it easily a great plus and which is something super nice to see the standby rain is excellent like maybe every four or five hours one percent if not even better so I definitely am highly impressed with the battery life but I, I kind of expected that because it's very similar to something like the Moto Z Play which has a similar sized battery and so on. Now what about the software? Yes once again as on most Nubia phones it is still running 6.0.1 which is not that bad because you have most features already. You have things like multi-window already. You have all these side gestures because as you can see here if you swipe from the side you can actually switch to the last app. As you can see here you can switch between these. So this actually enables you quite a nice multitasking experience if you know what you're doing. You have to get used to. Also a double swipe on the sides would kind of change the brightness. I don't want to do this on the video. And we have definitely some nice features here as you can see screen split up as I said smart covers available. Custom bottom key doesn't give you the option though for the recent apps so just menu I'm not quite sure why they do this touch gestures are available for example the free finger screenshot and so on and there are a lot of more things and I definitely like the overall aesthetics of the UI with the with the quick settings here the launcher maybe doesn't have a draw but that is fine and overall I still would say just in terms of capabilities this is good but if you want NuGet for some other reasons or whatever then it's just not what you will get and the security update in case you're wondering is from March 2017 so I would say that's good enough so let's switch to the cam and I have to say pretty much the same thing in general for the cam as I did for the Z17 mini because you have to be just a little bit further away as you can see this is still not quite enough and then it's a little bit blurry if you are further away then it's sharp and that's why I will just give the camera a quite good because it can not here though as you can see produce some definitely nice shots and then it would be like a really good but just too many pictures if you are a little bit closer just aren't sharp enough so it's just not consistent enough. So that's just a quite good at best which is a little bit better than good after all but yeah that is what it is. Now video though I have to say it looks a little bit better because nice contrast almost a little bit too much saturation though but definitely here it performs very nice because details are good and yeah this is really good. Now low light same as on the Z17 mini isn't all that impressive as you can see here early in the morning it just doesn't take the best pictures you need a little bit more light to get something better out of it so this is just the decent I would say because yeah as you can see this is just not impressive and indoors the same shutter times though especially and autofocus are absolutely fine outdoors same as on the Z70 mini again because it's almost the same camera you get absolutely really good pictures not the very best ones but autofocus works fine shutter times are good and you have a lot of camera modes that I don't want to go into because I usually just cover the qualities and so on but you have a lot of things to play with so this is definitely there landscape maybe not that impressive but overall yeah I can't really complain it is a solid shooter not maybe quite for 450 but yeah 4K though, yeah, on movement you can see that it's not super sharp but the quality actually is okay. Actually not even a lot of artifacting which is nice to see. And in 4K also, as you can see here the autofocus works noticeably better. So and just one nice straight jump to it. So no real any jittering like it's available on the 1080p60 which I will show you later on. And the quality as you can see here is fine. The autofocus definitely isn't the best one in general so this is something that I would still like to have seen others other ways and as you can see here 1080p yes it loses sharpness not actually that much since 4k already isn't that sharp but as you can see here autofocus behavior on video on 1080p is just not that good. Yes artifacting is even less but as you can see here now the autofocus is just way too I don't know hesit hesitant and too jumpy and nervous and it jitters also a lot footage is quite shake free but yeah I'm just not impressed with that so yeah and that's why I would just say let's jump straight into the pros and cons here covering the great design and build I still like that a lot then the very good fingerprint reader a very good display but you can see that on the negative side already displayed colors are too dark in general we get a good speaker a really good headphone jack a very good performance and a great plus battery life the UI is still very nice in terms of cameras like I said though a quite good only for the front facing camera a really good front facing video cam though decent low light cam 
really good main cam and a quite good video cam. Like I said already on the negative side, display is a little bit too dark in general. We are still running on Marshmallow and I think it's just too expensive for what it is, at least where I got it from and the video autofocus isn't all that impressive. Now, let me just get to the conclusion here real quick. For 450, and these would be my questions, the questions that I had, is it a good phone? Yes, absolutely. Can I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. Can I recommend it for 450 euros? Not really, because this is the crux. Phones like these, for example, the Moto Z Play, the Lenovo P2, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 are like half of that. They cost usually like 250, 280, depending on where you are, something like the Moto Z Play could be more expensive, but here it's like every second week for 250 available. And the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, costs about 150 and all of them are quite on the same level. This one maybe has a slightly better quality in terms of design and build, but actually not that much. The camera isn't really any better. The battery life is on the higher segment here comparing it with the Moto Z Play. But you can just get something at least on par for just way less and this is my issue. So if you can somewhere import it for a price of, uh, let's say below 300, then I have no problem recommending it for 450. Not so much. So it should come down, at least the international versions as well here, at least to 350 to consider it. Because after all, there are things like the not that updated software, the camera isn't very impressive for its price range, but for Snapdragon 625 phones, it seems to be actually be in line. But yeah, you see that it is a definitely very nice phone because it can hold up with, like I said, the P2, the Moto Z Play and the Xiaomi. And those are the best budget phones that I've ever mentioned. I had a comparison for that and I've praised them so much but not for 450. And this is where I'm gonna leave it. I hope you liked it. Maybe a com comment down there below, a subscription and a like, but that's it. And the next time, bye.